Elder Ann Bowen, she's, she's no stranger to us. We thank God for her so much. She's been so faithful and so diligent. She's oftentimes found either conducting the choir or she's on the praise and worship team. Uh, she's, a mother, she's been a mother to many of us, so many of us, and we thank God for her wisdom and her inspiration. And we just want to celebrate her today as I was praying about who to speak, who, who would be the speaker for today. God placed her on my heart and said she needs to speak. Amen. And so I'm excited to hear what she's going to say. Will you guys pray for her this morning? Will you pray for her? Come on, will you pray for her? Let's give a great big round of applause for the woman of God. Amen. Elder Ann Bowens, give her a hand as she comes. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. Bless him today. Hallelujah. Go before God in prayer. God, we thank you for today. God, I thank you for just giving me the strength just to stand today. I ask that your, your wisdom and the wisdom that you have imparted into me that I can impart it to some to the women today. God bless your word to bring it forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on, if you love your Lord, just clap your hands. Come on, if you're glad to be here, just clap your hands. Come on, if you know God made a way out of no way for you, just clap your hands. If you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You didn't know where you would be. You know that you're a lender, not the bar. Come on, clap your hands. <laughs> you know you're blessed in the city and you're blessed in the fields. Come on, clap your hands. Wherever you come and wherever you go, we know that you are blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Oh, God is good. 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 Happy Mother's Day. Y'all can be seated. Y'all standing up. <laughs> Woo. Y'all pray for me because my, my legs is wiggly. <laughs> Amen. Talk about Mother's Day. The history of Mother's Day can be traced back to, uh, to the Greek. They were honoring Rhea. She was a, a god, a mother of gods. But during the 1600s and the early uh, Christians in England, they paid homage and honor to the Mother Mary. So they said, okay, we're we going to honor Mary. We're not going to honor no pagan. So it later on moved on to United States to where we, second Sunday in May, where we honor mothers. So we honor mothers by giving them, what, what do you give? You give candy, you can give flowers. What else y'all give? Money, <laughs> gift cards. Amen. Um, Deuteronomy 15, 16 says honor your father and mothers as the Lord has commanded thee that thou days may be do what? prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which, the, which God giveth thee so we're to honor our mother our mothers that means we respect our mothers, right? We're not talking crazy to them. <laughs> okay. Ephesians 6 and 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. So how would you define motherhood? As a mother, we pour out all, we pour out all the time, y'all. We comfort. We correct. We care. We shuttle our kids. Sometimes we have four and five. We need to take them to the baseball game. You need to take them to the soccer game. You get to take them to the band. You need to pick them up. You get, so we shuttle. We're counselors. We have to referee. Sometimes our kids get kind of crazy. <laughs> so we have to referee. But let me tell you guys, when I was growing up, we couldn't fight. We did not fight each other. 
Because if you were fighting, you, you ended up, everybody got a whooping. Everybody, for real. Motherhood is emptying out in all that we do. We empty out a whole lot. And when we go to bed, we're trying to figure out, okay, what is tomorrow going to bring? What's going to happen? The Bible never says that every woman must be a mother. However, it says that every woman who's been blessed with motherhood should treat the role with the uttermost respect and responsibility. Now, I, I chose a clip from The Help. No, it ain't that one. <laughs> oh, God forbid, no, it's not that one. But <laughs> I, do, I think those are the, the most two scenes that we remember. But I'm going to show you this one, Jerry, if you would. Okay, y'all know the words right. Now doesn't she? Did y'all see that? So what does that what does what does that remind you of? What do you think of when you see when you see her? What do you think of? She's a mother. She's a nurturer. She had, she had, she's an encourager. Yes, she is. She had a whole lot of jobs going on. She had a whole lot of jobs going on. She had to deal with her boss. She had to deal with her boss. But later on, God, God worked that out, didn't he? I think she became richer than the boss, right? <laughs> but this, this little child, she saw in her. And the little and she loved her. That you is smart, you is kind, and you is important. So I said that to you, ladies, today. I said that to you. You kind. <laughs> you smart. You really smart. You had to figure out a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things that you like. Okay, how am I gonna figure this out? How am I gonna feed my kids? When I done, well, they done uh, fired me on my job, got my last paycheck. So how am I going to feed, tell, especially single mothers? You have to figure out how you're going to feed your kids, how you're going to do just a whole lot of things. But remember, you don't remember nothing else today. You can. <laughs> you're smart. And you're important. Now, this lady was a domestic worker. My mom, where'd she go? This is my mom when she was a teenager. Isn't she cute? <laughs> she was a teenager. And at the next picture we see, this is my mom. I think my mom was 90 when that picture was taken. Amen. Y'all give, give a clip for my, clap for my mom. Now, Two, three, four, five, six. My older brother was deceased at this time when we took when we took this picture. Now, Jerry, go back to my mom on that go kart. Y'all see? <laughs> now, my mother didn't mind the, the Greg. We could tell her. Remember, we were going to the park. But she said, "I'm gonna go." But y'all look where my mom's feet are. Actually, she didn't drive around. She rode a around with my niece. And I guess when she came back, she said, uh-uh, I'm not going anymore. Y'all take my picture like I've really been doing something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she was an encourager. My mom raising the, 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 seven, of the, the seven of us. Uh, I guess, you know, when you grow up, you really don't realize what your, what your mom really has to go through with the struggle that she have to deal with. Um, we moved from Texas, a little, from the country, deep country, to Portland, Oregon, which was a big, it was like out of the world for us. It was a big, big place. We had, when we entered 
uh, we integrated an integrated uh, school, which we came from a two-room school <laughs> when we came from Texas. Um, just dealing with it, with the population and seeing all the people was really traumatic for us, but I, tr traumatic for us, but I could imagine for her being a mom, how that was. Of course, our dad, we had our dad, but mama was the boss, pretty much, pretty much. If anything happened uh, in the house, I remember the last time I got in trouble, and I'm gonna move on. Everybody got a whooping. So you had to, we had to go get our, get a what? <laughs> we had to go get a switch. And you knew when you were growing up that you didn't have company. Don't have any company. But one day we decided that we were, <laughs> we were in the alley. We had an alley. And mom wrote, wrote the bus from work. She came through the alley instead of coming down our street. Now we thought we were smart. We had our sister, sister watching out, our baby sister, Sandra. Sandra, I know she's looking. Had our, son, had our sister watching out, and she, she said she would run to the corner and she wouldn't see mom, and then she'd run back. I don't see her. Run to the corner. Well, I imagine her running back. Mama came down the alley. So we had the water going, and all the neighbors, we were in the alley. Boy, we was having fun. <laughs> we thought we was, we looked up, we was like, oh, there's mama. Oh, no. So all the neighbors start scattering. She was just walking just as calm. She didn't say, hey, what y'all doing? Y'all better get out. Y'all better go home, y'all. She said, y'all get your switch. And at that time, we had an attic. So one by one, you know, all I could do is run around a little pole in the alley. She would just whoop us, whoop us. So I decided then, I'm not getting another whooping. I'm not, and I didn't. Of course, the others, they, did, they got in trouble, but I never did get in trouble. But that's just kind of a, basically, we went to Sunday school. We went to BTU. Went to everything that was happening at the church. We didn't have a choice. And until we left home, you had to go to church. If you, if you went to college, my brothers went to college, we went to college, Sunday morning, get up. Nobody stayed at home. It wasn't even a question. I don't care if you were 30. I think my brothers were maybe 25 and 30. They were still at home. You still had to get up and go to church. But now... Do you want to go to church today? <laughs> I'm, I don't feel like it. What? Get up. We're all going. It was so much for my, for my bringing up, but y'all, I know a lot of you understand that. Proverbs 31, 20, uh, 25 through 29 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity, she laughs, laughs at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction on her tongue. She watches over her affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but she surpasses them all. Y'all look, look at that. Proverbs woman. Many women do a whole lot of things, but you're the Proverbs woman. You are. You surpass them all. The Bible never says that a, man, a woman must be a mother. However, it says that every woman who's been blessed by motherhood should treat the role with utter respect. So don't just say, oh, well, I'm just a mama. I'm, I'm just, oh, I'm just... Hey, kids, I, I, I'm just your mama. No, you are more than that. You deserve honor and respect. Honor and respect. So we're going to talk about Eve for a minute. She's a mom, right? She was the first, and she's a mother of, mother of all. 
mother of all, all women, right? So can you imagine Eve being the first woman to bear a child? Now we know childbirth. Can you imagine the, the patient? She didn't have no medicine. They couldn't do no, what is up a door or whatever that is. <laughs> I think I had to have one with one of my kids, but she, she had to bear that pain. She had nothing. I, I hope Adam was there holding her hand. Uh oh. <laughs> that he was there, but she had to go through that pain. She had to go through the teeth, the bearing of the teeth. She had to go through when the child first walked. And so imagine she, she's trying to figure out, okay, well, he's trying to walk. What, what should I do? How do I, how do I do this? And then she has two sons, Cain and Abel. And so one got mad, got jealous. So, like our kids, our kids get jealous. Mama, you gave them more than me. Mama, you got more, you know. Like our kids, they get jealous. So, she was the first mother to witness a tragedy and to lose a son. So, can you imagine how her emotions, or even if she even knew how to deal with that as a mother, how to deal with that as a mother. So you being a mother, you going through how you went through childbirth, how you, you know, how you felt going through those pains, but then when that baby comes, or then when that child comes, it's a joy, you have a joy on your face. And y'all stop telling your kids, Dad, when I was having you, you gave me a hard time. Don't tell your kids that. <laughs> Don't tell I was in the I was in labor for 24 hours. Don't do that, y'all. That ain't that ain't right. <laughs> so Eve was our she was a mother of all living. You treat your child as a promised child. So like lay, uh, Sarah, what did she do? She'd been promised that she was going to have a child, but what did she do? She laughed. She was like, ha ha ha. Uh uh, I'm too old to have a child. I'm too old to have a child. But remember, whatever God has promised you, maybe it will. <laughs> it will come to pass. So she ended up having. Who she have? Y'all don't know. Okay, well tell me. <laughs> she ended up having Isaac. After all those years, she finally said, okay, God, thank you for this promised child. Thank you, Lord. In Proverbs, 7, it's Proverbs 31, it talks about the woman that's able to laugh when problems come. She does not stress. When you laugh at days to come, you are resting in the goodness of, of the Father of what may be happening in your circumstance. So you're doing your circumstances, baby, you can, you can laugh and say, uh, for the future, I know my future is gonna be better. We're believing that, that the blood of Jesus will cover us in our sins and then one day we will see him face to face. We're relying on the strength of God in our weakness. We are depending on sufficient grace of God that will meet us in every situation of our lives. Yes, we can be and bring a smile to what is to come. And let me tell y'all something. As much as I looked at these little notes, <laughs> I got lost. <laughs> so y'all come on pray for me <laughs> I titled the, the message or God titled the message the, re, the reality check of being a woman 
Now we try to do so much as women and um, do so much as w as women, and we're not. Sometimes we we do too much. Sometimes we in the way. We are. So the reality check is that, you know, we think that we're supposed to make our kids happy. <laughs> but you know what? That's not your job. That's not. It's not your job. James Lehman says that uh, we, we have to set our emotions aside and be objectively as possible. So forget how you feel. Don't feel guilty. If you tell your child no, well, mama, I, I promise I'll wash the dishes and clean up next time. No. Well, can I just go to, go to the show with my friends? I don't know them. I don't know their parents. I don't, I don't know them. I'm sorry. Or even if I didn't, didn't don't know them, you still can't go. <laughs> so, so don't feel bad. It's not your, your job. They're going to get mad at you. They're going to stomp their feet. And I know you've experienced this in Walmart, and I hate to talk about Walmart. <laughs> Parents give you a good talk. I am not buying you a toy. I'm not buying you a toy. So when you go, uh-oh, somebody pointed. <laughs> so when you go in the store, make sure you stay with me. We're not touching anything. And you go in the store after all that big old talk. You go in the store, and there go your kids. Mama, can I have that? I told you when you came in here, that we wouldn't go, you know, you'd be trying to whisper. I told you when we came in here that I wasn't going to buy you anything. Turn them out. There they go. So what y'all do? Uh, in, the, in Walmart, you know, at, when I was growing up, my mama didn't care about whooping me in the store. Well, I knew not to act up. We knew not to act up. We knew not to touch anything, but the kids, they all, yeah, they're trying. They're all in the floor, they're screaming, and everybody's looking like, yeah, she knows, she, she ain't treating them, she ain't teaching them right. If that was me, <laughs> if that was me, I'd, I'd get them, I'd really get them. They need to get, you know, and it, it's funny, because sometimes, sometimes I'd be seeing kids in the store, and I'd be, I'd be wanting to say, Get up from there, I'm gonna get you, you know. <laughs> but of course, you know, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. But we have to, we can't always make them happy. Controlling our kids, wow. We're depending on, the, on grace, the grace of God to keep us, to help us, and to teach us how that we're con to control our kids. Doing for your kids, don't do for your kids what they're capable of doing. Sometimes we'll step in, we'll be like, I told you to go make up your bed. Five hours later, okay. So you said, oh, well, whatever, I'll do it myself. So you go and you do it yourself. Or even, uh, and this might sound sounds a little far stretched, but... If your kid is six years old and can't tie their shoe, stop tying their shoe for them. Teach them to tie their shoes. If they have to work on it, make them little rabbit ears, fix it. Make them tie their shoes. Of course, you know they got the ones with the Velcro, but that's not fair. You still need to learn to teach your kids how to, <laughs> you still need to teach your kids how to tie their shoes. Sometimes making tough decisions for your children or not are not 
It's not easy making the tough decisions for them. Um, let's take for instance, and maybe it's not a tough decision, but take for instance uh, a teenager, uh, she gets pregnant. So of course don't beat her up. You know, you know, we can't do that. But make her responsible We, we, so my consequences that we do as kids, it, you know, it really hurts the parents. And of course, it hurts you too. But still, make them be responsible. Make them get up at night and change them diapers. Get up at night and fix that bottle. Or whatever the case may be. Some of y'all saying, oh, well, I, I don't want them to, they got to sleep, uh-uh. <laughs> Get up. Do your part. Do your part. And that, you know, that's just one of the, even for guys, you know, guys be responsible. Dad, teach your, dad, teach your sons. You know, I know this is Mother's Day, but dad, teach your sons to, re, to be responsible. Just like, what was that? Chastity, she decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice abstinence. And she got up and made a vow to the Lord and said, you know, uh, I'm going to wait till I get married. Amen. So make it your amen. Kudos to her. I'm going to wait till I get married. Because then you get, you get in a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chelsea, I'm sorry. That was Chelsea. But just teach your children to be responsible. Talk to your kids. You got to talk to them. And that may be something that I really didn't do when my, I was growing, my kids were growing up. But I've, I've learned from hindsight that, you know what, I should have talked to them more. I should have listened to them more. I should have been, uh, had a listening ear instead of being the one that was, I don't want to hear that. I, go on, go somewhere. I don't want to hear that. So when your child comes to you, sometimes you just want to give your parents a hug. You just want to give your parents a hug. Get away. Don't be kissing on me, y'all. Don't do that. Let your kids, <laughs> let your kids love you. Let your kids love on you. Let your kids love on you. And I had a page in here about the, being a woman of wisdom, a wisdom of a, a woman of honor. So we're, we're to respect women and to honor them. The Proverbs 31, that, that first verse talks about uh, a woman of honor. So we're to carry ourselves, women, as women of honor. I know that we go through circumstances, different times in our lives that uh, we're not acting like we are uh, women of wisdom, wis wis women of honor. All the stress. Jerry, you got that post up back there. <laughs> Says she is a woman. She is a woman, daughter sister. She's a mother. She's a person. So it might be some of you in here that don't, that you haven't birthed a child physically, but to somebody, you're a mother. To somebody, you're a mother. You might not even be any kin to somebody or but still, to them, you're a mother. The Marvin Sapp did a song that said, never would have made it. <laughs> never would have made it without you. Never could have made it without you. So today, tell somebody that. 
So, and there's people in here that you wouldn't even imagine that want to tell somebody that. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I could have lost it all. Through that divorce, through that hurt, through that pain, woo, through that abuse. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. And we've had things and problems and sometimes they go through our lives that we thought we was going crazy. That things that could have made us crazy. But now I see. See, I didn't see it when I was looking at you right then. I didn't see it. But I never would have made it with you without you. You know. Could have lost it all, but now I see that you were there for me. You know what? I'm stronger. <laughs> I'm wiser. I'm better. I'm so much better. Is that your testimony today? Can you look at somebody? Just look at somebody. Somebody and tell them I, I never would have made it. I don't want to start calling names, but there are some people in here. I y'all family, right? Because y'all said, Well, Miss Hand didn't call me. Go on the girls, thank you. Never would have made it without you. Yeah. SOP. <laughs> Never would have made it without you. Charlotte, where you at? I love you, girl. That's my BFF, y'all. Never would have made it without you. Whew. Pastor. First lady. Been there. He flew all the way across the country to my mother's service. Be a first lady just to encourage me, to encourage the family. And during that time, I, I really needed strength. Never would have made it without you. Dee Dee Perkins back there. You know I love you, girl. Never would have made it without you. Never would have made it without you, Norman. You just don't know. I just, just everybody. I see Miss Margie out there. Miss Margie, I never would have made it without you, Miss Margie. Without your encouragement and just telling me to hold on and and to be strong. Just praise team. <laughs> I love y'all. Never would have made it without you. Stronger. I'm wiser. CLP, I thank God for you. Never would have made it. Jerry back there. Jerry back there. <laughs> Never would have made it without you, Jerry. But that, that poster up there it describes so many things that we have gone through as women. So many. Whew. But you're stronger than you know. You're greater than you know. You're bigger than you know. So if you just tell yourself, I am. Be an encourager to other women. Be an encourager to other women. Thank you, Ms. Caprisha. 
So if you just can, you just kind of look at somebody just for a second and just tell them thank you. Thank you. Come on, just, just lift your hands just for a second. Hallelujah. Jesus. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I could have lost it all. But now I see that you were there for me. I can say I never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. Could have lost it all. Could be in the same asylum somewhere. Woo! Because I don't look like. <laughs> I don't look like. Whoa. Stronger. Wiser and better. So much better. When I look and see things that you have brought me to. I have you. Hold on to I'm wiser Stronger Better So much better Woo. So today Tell that to somebody Tell your mama that Tell your sister that. Well, we're not speaking, so what? <laughs> my aunt, my cousin. Me and that go for you too. Tell somebody. Give them a big hug. Tell them I never. <laughs> but I thank God. Thank God for you. Because through that, through whatever has gone on, you've given me strength. Whatever has gone on, you've given me courage to stand and to know that I'm better. I'm better for it. I'm wiser. Thank you, Gina. I see my sister over there. Never would have made it without you, girl. Thank you. Because through we just we, we learned so much. We learn so much from each other. We learn so much from each other. So, I mean, do y'all feel my heart? Y'all feel my heart? I can say I'm stronger, <laughs> wiser, I'm better, so much better. Woo. Woo. Come on, just lift your hands and just say it one more time. I never would have made it. Never could have made it. Never would have made it, Sam. 